that today I wanted to go ahead and share with you my June wrap up. I read six books in June, which I was hoping to read more, but I really liked almost all of the books that I read. Like, pretty much every book got either a four or a five star for me, except for one. So it was a really good reading month anyway, so it's fine. No regrets. I pretty much read nothing but queer books in June, with the exception of one book that I started in May and just didn't finish until June. Um, but everything else was queer and it was great. And I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the wrap up. The very first book I finished in the month of June was We Are Okay by Nita LaCour. This is a YA contemporary about a girl named Marin who has pretty much lived with her grandfather most of her life. And right after she graduates high school, her grandfather passes away. And Marin really doesn't know how to deal with it. She's pretty much overcome with grief and has a hard time dealing with it. So she goes ahead and moves to New York, which is where she was planning on going to college. And she doesn't really talk to anybody in her life until Christmas break, whenever her best friend comes to visit her and she starts to work through some of that grief. This was a really beautiful story. Nina LaCour's writing is always really great. I read um, another book by her, Everything Leads to You, and I really liked her writing style in that book as well. But I think it really fit this format well and just the sad but also like slowly getting more hopeful tone that's present in the story. There's also a female-female romance in here and Nina LaCour herself is also queer so it's an own voices book. Um, but I really liked all of the characters in this and I really liked the way the story was told. It's very short but I think that that fits the story as well. I ended up giving We Are Okay four and a half out of five stars. The next book I completed in June was my favorite book of the year. At least so far. We're only halfway through the year, but like, this book is incredible. It's being very hyped up right now, but it, it should be because it's worth it. And that book is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. So I went into this book expecting to like it, but I didn't expect to be completely fucking obsessed with it, and I act, I totally am. This book is more of a new adult romance book about Alex, who's the first son of the United States and Henry, who is the Prince of Wales. At the beginning of this book, Alex and Henry are basically enemies. They hate each other, but that doesn't last because it's an enemies to lovers story. Um, and it is absolutely wonderful. The characters were amazing. The dialogue between the characters was amazing. Like I, I, I will, I'll laugh in books. Like I'll do the kind of the standard <laughs> type of thing. No, this book literally had me cackling. I remember there were a couple of times where I'd be like laying in my bed reading and my mom would hear me in the other room laughing. But anyway, like it, it's great. The humor's great. Really just the writing overall was wonderful. Casey McQuiston is a very talented author. And the plot was really interesting. A lot of this book, it kind of, it takes place over a pretty long period of time compared to a lot of books. It's about a year or so and you get glimpses of the next election in this because in in this alternate universe Alex's mom is who won the 2016 election which is a great world to think about um, but you also kind of get glimpses of them working on the next you know trying to get her reelected in 2020 um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of politics and Alex wants to be a politician one day and he's very very like inspired by politics and he's a hard worker. So there's a lot happening in this book just besides romance. There's a lot going on um, and it's all done really really well. So I really could talk about this book for 20 more minutes but I'm gonna I'm gonna make myself stop because you really just need to go pick this up and read it especially if you're like in a slump or if you just need something that'll make you happy. This this is the book for you. Definitely five out of five stars. I wish I could give it ten out of five stars. I mean I guess I can but like all the stars. This book gets all of the stars. The next book I finished in June was Wild Card by Marie Lu. Now this is the book where I started it in May. I didn't finish it until June. Um, but this is the sequel to Warcross. Warcross is, um, it's a sci-fi duology about Marika Chen who kind of gets an opportunity to compete in the Warcross games which Warcross is like a virtual reality type game. This is the conclusion to the duology. I wasn't really sure what I was going to think about this book because honestly I heard some mixed things but I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a solid conclusion. It was super action-packed. There were some twists and turns I didn't see coming. There were some that I did. 
I mean, it's YA. But there were some that I didn't, and I thought it wrapped up the story really well, honestly. I think that the first book is still better, but I really liked the conclusion. I ended up giving it four out of five stars, and I would definitely recommend this duology if you are kind of into the into that kind of thing. The next book I finished was another audiobook and that was You Know Me Well by Nina LaCour and David Levithan. This book is a YA contemporary. We follow two characters, Kate and Mark. The book takes place over Pride, which I thought was really cool, um, but Kate and Mark kind of, they know each other but they're not really friends and then they become friends and um, it's really a story about friendship. Obviously there's a lot of queer characters in this book, and one thing I did really like about this book is pretty much every main character, aside from like the parents, was queer. And I thought that was really cool because you don't run across a lot of books, even a lot of queer books, where like that many characters that are involved in the main story are queer in some way. With that being said, I didn't really like this book that much. It was okay. I just wasn't very invested in the story or in the characters. Kate, um, I really didn't care for that much. She was kind of a terrible person. Um, and so I got really less invested whenever her stuff would come up. But I did really like the friendship between Kate and Mark, so they had that going for them. But this book was just fine. I've read Nina LaCour and David Levithan both before, so I was expecting to like it more than I did and it was kind of a let down. But I'm glad I read it and I really liked the pride elements, but I only gave it three and a half stars, which is still like a good rating because there were parts of it I really did like, but it was just okay. The next book I wanted to talk about is I Wish You All the Best by Mason Deaver. This story is about a non-binary character named Ben who comes out to their parents and is kicked out of their house. So Ben goes to live with their sister who they haven't spoken to in about 10 years or so since their sister left home. So while Ben is kind of trying to deal with the trauma from all of that, they also meet this you know, boy at school named Nathan, who they start to really see as a really good friend, and then maybe more. I will say this book wasn't focused so much on the romance part. Um, you could definitely tell that Ben liked Nathan, but they didn't really know how they felt about that, especially in terms of them still kind of like coming to terms with their identity and just kind of figuring themselves out. Um, but you can like, you can ship the two characters pretty much through the whole book. Like, these two characters are very, very shippable, but I, I really liked reading about Ben's experience because I unfortunately haven't read a lot of books featuring non-binary characters, and I think this might be the first Own Voices book I've read by a non-binary author. I think this story is very, very important for a lot of reasons, but I also really, really liked Ben's relationship with their sister and them kind of trying to rebuild a relationship after not really seeing each other for so long. And just having that support system there for Ben was just really beautiful to read about. Really, this was just a beautiful book. I highly, highly recommend it. I gave it five out of five stars, and I will definitely be reading more by Mason. And the very last book I read in June was actually an e-arc. Um, that I got from NetGalley, and that book was Wilder Girls by Rory Power. This book is super outside of my comfort zone, so let me preface this by saying that this book is like a YA horror book, which is not my thing. But with that being said, I really liked this book. It was super different, and it wasn't like horror in that it was scary necessarily. It was more horror and like it was creepy. It was very gory. So if you're a very squeamish person, I would say be very careful because I'm someone who is not really that squeamish and there were a few times where I had a hard time reading things in this book. What this book is about, it's kind of pitched as like Lord of the Flies but with queer girls. There are some queer characters, I will say it's not a central point of the plot but I, after reading it I don't think it necessarily needed to be. There's this island where these girls used to go to a boarding school and then the tox took over. And the tox is something that's affected the entire island, the island itself, the animals, and the people. Um, and it affects everybody very differently. It's kind of this like, I don't even really know how to describe it, but it's really graphic and horrible things happen to these people and these girls. And the author is very descriptive about it. So just keep that in mind when you go to read it, because some of it is, 
But anyway, I really enjoyed my experience reading this, even though this is like super outside of my comfort zone, but I'm kind of glad it got me outside of my comfort zone. It wasn't really what I expected, and to be honest, I didn't know a ton about it before going into it, so it was a nice surprise. But even like, I kind of had a hard time getting into it just because of the gore factor. But once the plot really started to pick up, I got super into it and I was able to push past all of that. I really wanted to know what the hell was happening on this island. It was just, it was a lot. I got really into it. But I think that people are really gonna like this. I think that it is a good book if horror isn't really your genre since it isn't necessarily scary. Um, just be very careful about, you know, the gore and all of that stuff but I really liked it I gave it four out of five stars and it comes out on July 9th so keep your eye out if you think this sounds interesting to you but anyway that's it for my June wrap up let me know down in the comments what your favorite read of June was and I will see you guys next time with another video bye